All right, let's take a quick look at wavetable synthesis. Basically, wavetable synthesis, um, it's, it's basically working with a waveform that's pre-created um, to work from. So, you know, whether or not you're subtractive, you're going to add, you're going to do subtractive synthesis from that, or you're going to do additive synthesis from that. Um, that's, you know, that's up to you how, which way you're going to go with that. Um, there's all other types of synthesis that can be used in conjunction with it. But, you know, basically you start out, you have some periodic waveforms that, you know, with a periodic waveform that, you know, over time, it's going to do the same thing over and over again. So, you know, I mean, the understanding of it is just like when you're looking at a square wave or a sawtooth wave, that it's going to be repetitive. It's going to repeat the same form over and over and over again throughout its cycle. And any waveform that you start out with, with it like that, that, you know, you are, you, you have a, a basic waveform that's a wavetable synthesis if you're using it I like that. Um, sometimes, you know, they might view it as you're just using it like that or you're going to do other synthesis to it also. But the wavetable synthesis is basically starting out with that waveform. Um, and, you know, that as far as in the studio that, you know, you get a synthesizer and you'll have these basic waveforms to start with. Sawtooth wave, triangle wave, square wave. I mean, I don't know how many there might have. Sometimes hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of, you know, arbitrary or different types of, you know, basic waveforms. And that's a real simple concept to understand. That's what you're dealing with. Um, and the arbitrary waveform, you know, is a little bit different because um, if you have that periodic waveform, something like this is, you know, this is a real simple um, synthesizer from, uh, it's called Curve 2. And basically what this allows you to do is you've got a basic sinusoid. And if you've watched this video on sound, as you change the sinusoid, it starts causing other harmonic content. Well, so basically it's almost like, you know, you've got an arbitrary waveform generator. And there's a video on this channel about that, that just from the basic sinusoid, it starts creating other harmonic content. Now, that harmonic content is going to be periodic. It's going to repeat over and over and over again to create a sound. So that's another way to look at that wavetable synthesis is that you're actually creating a wavetable to work from. Does that make sense? you know, from an arbitrary waveform generator like that. Um, one step further is to start trying to make that, you know, I don't know that that's actually part of it, but, you know, that's the basic understanding of wavetable synthesis is using those waveforms. How far that some people might view of combining different waveforms. So you have wavetable synthesis where you, you've got a sawtooth wave, you've got a triangle wave, that you've added together and you've added some arbitrary waveform that you've created in a synthesizer like this then you've added them together to create this other sound you know from wavetable synthesis meaning you're not really using your you know the understanding of it, it's kind of hard to relate that because most most of the time that from my understanding when i first started studying it was that it's basic waveform sawtooth wave square wave triangle wave and so many set waveforms like that that you can combine um, to create synthesis. But that's about as far as it goes. And anytime you start doing anything else to it, your subtractive synthesis or your additive synthesis to those basic waveforms, those basic wavetables. But the arbitrary waveform generated like this to where you're starting out with a basic sinusoid and you start changing that sinusoid to where it starts changing the harmonic content is basically that's going to be another periodic waveform that you could add to your wavetable, you know, and as another waveform. So, you know, that can be, but some people might not view it that way. But in my mind, it is because it's going to be periodic and you've created a wave form that you can add your wavetable that's going to be periodic over time. It's going to be, you know, set doing the same, the same, uh, um, the same thing over, over time. So, you know, the other aspect of that is being able to take that and make that, you know, into a quasi-periodic quasi waveform. Being able to take those, those, those periodic waveforms and make them, that they basically have the same structure over time, but aspects of them vary. That's more naturalistic, like if you had like a violin or something, that its basic periodic waveform is going to probably be pretty, pretty periodic and repeat over time. But with the quasi-periodic nature that some of the 
some of the aspects and properties of that waveform will change over time, making it quasi-periodic. And that's debatable on whether that's part of wavetable synth or not. But that's the basic understanding of it, so that when somebody says wavetable synthesis, that you know you're dealing with those periodic waveforms um, to to construct other waveforms, you know, or to construct other sounds. And that you know those lines can get kind of fuzzy, but that's the basic concept. Okay, fe uh, frequency modulation synthesis. Um, this one can get kind of complex, but. The basic understanding of it is that if you understand a frequency modulation, that you've got a frequency that's going to modulate up or down. So that frequency is going to go up or down and waver back and forth. It's modulating back and forth. And, you know, that modulation incorporated into your synthesis is the basic concept. <coughs> some of the basic ideas and some of the work that's been done in that can be, you know, like let's say you've got a, square, you've got a triangle wave. So you've got one triangle wave, and you take another triangle wave, you know, um, well, let's explain this with a synthesizer. That, you know, the basic concept of the frequency modulation, taking, you know, an oscillator, and then, you know, taking a basic waveform or, or sinusoid, you know, and then oscillating with a low-frequency oscillator, so that, you know, it's, uh, you know, it starts doing that, using the, using the low-frequency oscillator to, to adjust the the modulation how fast the modulation is on that frequency and that's a real simple concept um that can get a little complex when you start talking about taking you've got one oscillator producing a a, a sawtooth wave and then you engage another oscillator that's producing another os, uh, sawtooth wave the same type of sawtooth wave and one of them you start oscillating does that make sense so the basic concept of that is that those two those two timbers are going to work together in frequency modulation to where that one static timber is going to be whatever it is and it's going to stay constant and the other one's going to have frequency modulation on it and those two playing together are going to cause very rich harmonic you know um, overtones and distortions in that basic sound and that's a real simple way to look at it um, and if you think about it there's all kinds of ways you can configure that Depending on how many oscillators you have with how many different wavetables, um, you know, the combinations of those to do different things or adding sinusoids with modulation, you know, that you've got a, you've got a triangle wave and, and you, one oscillator, you've decided two oscillators, you've got the sinusoids on each one of those and each one of those sinusoids, this sinusoid, you chose the primary frequency of the, of the first, you know, um, wavetable here. And on the, on the other, on the other oscillator, you've chosen the sinusoid and you've chosen the third and you've put both of them on the low frequency oscillators that are oscillating differently. I mean, you know, that's one way to look at it. And that whole concept can get real complex. You just got to get a hold of the basic understanding of that, you know, your, of the frequency modulation synthesis is you're basically modulating the frequencies. And sometimes that can be you have a, you have like, a, let's say that you've got a sample and, you know, you've run in that sample through one channel and then you're basically trying to run it through another synthesis where you're doing some frequency modulation on it to enrich that sound. And I, I tried to state that as basically as simple as I could or parts of that sound. You might have done subtractive synthesis on that sound or additive synthesis to it before you did some frequency modulation to it so that it works with that original sound that's static you know and, and and the other ones modulating and those through time cause some rich harmonic structures and that's the basic understanding of it that whole thing that whole concept can get very complex and you can sit around and talk with people about different things to do a lot but that's a basic concept and it's really simple um, to understand if you look at it that way so basically that's frequency modulation synthesis and let's see if there's any other aspects of it that we should address all right if we talk about like phase distortion or phase modulation synthesis um it's basically if you look back at that frequency modulation synthesis how we had talked about how that goes together this is basically the same concept only dealing with phase so basically the entire same concept except for dealing with phase so when you're dealing with that concept, the understanding of 
of it is is that let's say this black line here is what I mean it's one sinusoid but pretend it's like a, a you know it's a complex waveform in a timber and this here this one here is the same complex waveform started at a different phase this is the same complex waveform started at a different phase and that they're playing together at the same time and adjusting them does that make sense so it's like the basic concept of it is you've got that static timber playing along and then you've got an exact copy of it that's doing phase modulation just like we talked about frequency modulation but in phase does that make sense and so that can cause a lot of issues like phasers and all kinds of things, getting things out of phase um, with because of phase modulation and how they start interacting together. That concept, concept is really simple to understand. And the basic understanding of it, to get it real simple in your head, all the different things you can do with it can be very complex. But the basic understanding is you've got one sinusoid that's playing at, you know, that's, go, that's just going along static. And you've got, you take another oscillator um, with the same sinusoid at the same frequency, but you start it out at a different phase. So like this one's starting out way up here, or this one's starting out way down there. And it's actually the same frequency, you know, but at, you know, starting at a different phase, which can gr drastically affect the sound. It's one of the issues that you come to when you're mixing music, that when you start getting things out of phase and instruments out of phase, or, you know, that, or, or the same recording that's recorded with different microphones and they're out of phase and start sounding funny or something like that because of the phase issues. So it's a real simple concept to understand. There's nothing complicated about that and that's the basic concept. So if you're actually dealing with with that concept, you need to approach it the same way that you're approaching the, the frequency modulation synthesis and the phase distortion is going to be the same concept except for your trying to overlay different phases of the same sound on top of each other to come up with different effects. So I hope I made that very simple and very clear. Um, and if you've read, watched those other videos, the phase issue should be very simple to understand and what that means how, as how you'd be working with that as a tool to sculpt, you know, the same way as we talked about in frequency modulation synthesis. Physical modeling synthesis, we're not going to get into. If you get that far to where you're actually getting into physical modeling synthesis, um, that's great. Um, most of the time I deal with that stuff that it starts becoming a sound sculpting thing. And I, I normally don't take it to that area because that's just a little bit too much math to be dealing with most of the things that I'm dealing with in the studio that, you know, I mean, there are great applications for it and it definitely uh, it will definitely further the study and the things that synthesizers can do, but I don't really get into it and I'm not really going to discuss it much. All right, so we've talked about subtractive synthesis, additive synthesis, wavetable synthesis, frequency modulation synthesis, and phase distortion synthesis. One thing about phase modulation and phase distortion synthesis is one of them would be phase modulation so that you've got one of the one of them would be modulating in phase and does that make sense that phase would be actually modulating just like you know any type of a modulation and the phase distortion would be one of them just being out of phase of the other one which basically is looked upon as phase distortion and it's that simple try to keep those that simple in your head in the physical modeling synthesis We'll probably get into it, but the way I approach it is a little bit differently because, um, you know, I do some things in an arbitrary waveform generator, but I try to steer clear of that. And getting it that technical most of the time, unless I'm really trying to do something unique for a sampler. So um, um, I hope you enjoyed this video. And next we're going to talk about some sample-based synthesis and some other types of synthesis. So I'll see you in the next video. Peace, hope, love.